security of the believer. Thank you, Bob. Okay, last question for tonight. Gentlemen, I really do appreciate your time for this and uh, for giving us a good, engaging <clears throat> engaging debate on uh, one save, always save. Okay, here we go. Last question is for you, Bob. Andre Anthony, ask Bob how he understands Galatians 5, verse 24. And if someone comes to believe in Jesus but starts to live in the flesh, does this verse still apply? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Galatians 5, verses 22 through uh, 24 is one of uh, several vice lists that Paul has. Also see 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, and Ephesians 5, 5 to 7. I have about a 20-page journal article at faithalone.org that you can read for free. It's on Christians who lose their legacy, and it's specifically on this passage, Galatians 5, uh, 22 to 24, although I do discuss the other two passages as well. The issue here, as we brought up earlier, is what does it mean to inherit the uh, kingdom uh, of God? Um, and... Uh, I, I'm sorry, 19 through 21, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. And he says, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I take it inheriting here, as in most of the New Testament, refers to ruling with Christ in the life to come. And the believer who is uh, in this state, that is, they are not walking in the light, but they are someone walking in the darkness. Then they are a person like this. And if they are like this, then they're not going to inherit the kingdom. There are basically two conditions of ruling with Christ. We have to continue to be a confessing Christian. So we need to be part of a local church that is teaching God's word and proclaiming God's word. And we can't be walking in the darkness. If a person is walking in the darkness, then he's not walking in fellowship with God. So I would understand this to be an issue of ruling with Christ in the life to come. And there are a lot of verses on this. Check out the 20 page article. Thank you very much, Bob, for that response. Steve, go ahead. Floor's yeah, we, we didn't get into Galatians tonight. That's too bad because this very chapter that the question comes from has a very strong verse that I think uh, challenges the, the view that Bob is presenting. Because Paul, Paul is talking to Christians who have uh, basically moved into Judaizing, under Judaizing influence and trusting in the law now. Uh, and he says of them in verse four of this very chapter, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. Now, I'm not sure how a person can become estranged from Christ and still be saved or how they can fall from grace and still be saved. It seems to me that if you're saved by grace and you've fallen out of grace, fallen from it, uh, then it seems to me that you aren't saved. Uh, now, as far as the verses that are mentioned, the, the questioner, I don't know if they really named the verse they meant. I don't know if they were talking about verses 19 through 21. It seemed to me that they might be. And that's what Bob assumes also, and we may be right or wrong. Verse 24, the verse they mentioned in the same chapter that I was discussing, says, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. But he says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Uh, so if we're Christ, we have crucified the flesh with its desires, meaning we have, we've died to that. We've, we basically uh, renounced those things and, and condemned those things. And uh, instead we walk in the spirit. But no, that's, not what it, that's not what it says. Because it's saying, because right after it says that, let us walk in the spirit. So they have to tell them. He has to tell them to walk in the spirit, right? So whatever crucify the flesh means, it doesn't mean walk in the spirit. You have to also walk in the spirit. So crucify the flesh, in my opinion, is just that, that, that spiritual, the death of the old self, the death of the old spirit, and the birth of the new spirit. That's all crucify the flesh means. It's just being born again. Um, it would have been good at, uh, to start at verse 18 and explain the concept distinction of being led, walking by the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, it would have been good to to talk more about all that. But just even right here, when Greg said that about 525, I mean, 525 disproves what Greg is saying. Because in 524, he's saying that if you, if you crucify the flesh, that means you walk in the Spirit. And then in 525, it says, if you live in the Spirit, we must also walk in the Spirit. Let's hear what he says again. But uh, let's see this. Flesh with its passions and desires. But he says, if we live in this, oh, the questioner, I don't know if they really named the verse they meant. I don't know if they were talking about verses 19 through 21. It seemed to me that they might be. And that's what Bob assumes also. And we may be right or wrong. Verse 24, the verse they mentioned in the same chapter that I was discussing, says, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. But he says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Uh, so if we're Christ, we have crucified the flesh with its desires, meaning we have We've died to that. We've we basically uh, renounced those things and, and condemned those things. And uh, instead, we walk in the spirit. But see, see what he said. See what he just said. He just said, if we are Christ, we have crucified the flesh. Five twenty four, Galatians five twenty four. If we are Christ, we have crucified the flesh. Da 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 da. And then he says that means we walk in the spirit. Five twenty four. But then at five twenty five, Paul says, let us if we live in the spirit, which is what which is, he's saying. Live in the spirit is five twenty four. He's saying. When you crucify the flesh, that's that means you live in the spirit. That means you're born again. You're that's positional. Then he says, "Let us also walk in the spirit." So five twenty four cannot refer to walking in the spirit, but that's what Greg just said. But anyway, uh, renounce those things and, and condemn those things, and uh, instead we walk in the spirit. But 
it's interesting. He says that if we are Christians, we do walk in the Spirit. Uh, Paul said in Galatians or in Acts. Excuse me. No, no, no. He doesn't. He says if we're if we if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us meaning, let's do this, guys. Let's. Like, he's trying to exhort them to walk in the Spirit. Right. He's not saying that if you're Christians, you will walk in the Spirit. He. That's why he has to tell them to walk in the Spirit. He does it twice in this chapter, and so. Greg has completely misinterpreted that, and I don't know. I hope Wilkin is going to hold him to the hold him on this one, but that's that's just really bad. I renounce those things and, and condemn those things, and uh, instead we walk in the spirit. But it's interesting. He says that if we are Christians, we do walk in the spirit. Uh, Paul said in Galatians or in X, excuse me, in Romans chapter eight, he said, uh, you know, as many as are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. So not just as many as. No, well, oh man, again, it's led by the spirit. It doesn't say walk in the spirit. It says led by the spirit, right? Anyway, it's a completely different thing, man. So this is the thing. I hope Wil uh, Wilkins gonna gonna say something here because this guy's completely confusing these things about walking the spirit. We're Christians. Stuff. We do walk in the spirit. Uh, Paul said in Galatians or in Acts, excuse me, in Romans chapter eight, he said, uh, you know, as many as are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. So not just as many as have uh, have been born again. But also who are led by the Spirit of God. Now, Paul indicates if you're led by the Spirit of God, you, you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said that in Galatians 5 17. So there's uh, Paul's teaching seems to be that if you are led by the Spirit, you, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, hmm. If you are led by the Spirit, I guess he's just, I mean, this is the thing. Is it a different book? He's probably talking about a different thing. That's the thing. Just because he says led by the Spirit, doesn't mean the same thing every time he says it. It's like you have to look at the context too, right? But anyway, let's see what he says. Many as are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So not just as many as have uh, have been born again, but also who are led by the Spirit of God. Now Paul indicates if you're led by the Spirit of God, you you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said that in Galatians five seventeen. So there's uh, Paul's teaching seems to be that uh, you know you have to be trusting Christ, not in the law. If you if you begin to trust in the law instead of Christ. You've fallen from grace. You've been estranged from Christ. You've joined another religion other than Christianity, and there's no grace in that for you. And also, that if you are a child of God, you are being, you are walking in the spirit. You are not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. So, you know, if, if therefore someone thinks they're a Christian and they are fulfilling the lust of the flesh, and, and Bob thinks this is possible for a real Christian to do, then then Paul must, I think Paul must have been schizophrenic because he said that won't happen if you're walking in the spirit. And only those who are led by the spirit. No, 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 because I think somebody can be led by the spirit but still not walk in the flesh. Because you're led by the spirit when you're when you're saved. You're led, but it doesn't mean you're going to follow it. So you can be led by the Spirit, and you can walk after the flesh, or you can walk in the Spirit. But you're being led by the Spirit one way or another. If you're saved, you're being led by the Spirit. That's what I think is going on. Anyway. You are walking in the Spirit. You are not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. So, you know, if, if therefore someone thinks they're a Christian and they are fulfilling the lust of the flesh, and, and Bob thinks this is possible for a real Christian to do, then, then Paul must... I think Paul must have been schizophrenic because he said that won't happen if you're walking in the spirit. And only those who are led by the spirit are the sons of God. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, again, I don't speak this. Wait, wait, what what won't happen? Change from Christ. You've joined another religion other than Christianity, and there's no grace in that for you. And also, that if you are a child of God, you are being, you are walking in the spirit. You are not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. So, you know, if, if therefore someone thinks they're a Christian and they are fulfilling the lust of the flesh, and, and Bob thinks this is possible for a real Christian to do, then, then Paul must, I think Paul must have been schizophrenic because he said that won't happen if you're walking in the spirit. And only those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, again, I don't see this as conducive with the view that. Wait, 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 wait. Obviously. I gotta get this. I gotta figure this so, out. Wait, wait. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. I, I have to understand this because what you're saying about led by the Spirit, I just don't get it. Exodus 12 12 says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. This means that God is going to do that tenth plague where he strikes down all the firstborn in Egypt. That's what that's going to happen there, okay? But I just want to hear what, what Greg is saying about this led by the Spirit thing. Because this is this is very weird. Let's find out what this is all about. I'm sorry if it's taking too long. Christ, we have crucified the flesh with its desires. Meaning we have we've died to that. We've we basically uh, renounced those. I mentioned 18 through 21. It seemed to me that they might be. And that's what Bob assumes also, and we may be right or wrong. Verse 24, the verse they mentioned in the same chapter that I was discussing, says, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. But he says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Uh, so if we're Christ, we have crucified the flesh with its desires, meaning we have 
we've died to that. We've, we basically uh, renounce those things and, and condemn those things. And uh, instead, we walk in the spirit. But it's interesting. It says that. If so, okay, right there, right there, he's wrong. Okay, because as I pointed out earlier, that Paul is clearly not saying that just because you, you crucified the flesh that you'll also walk in the spirit. He's saying you have crucified the flesh. And then he's exhorting them to also walk in the spirit. All right. So let's uh, let's keep going. So any, anyone who's crucified the flesh, they live in the spirit, but they don't necessarily walk in the spirit, according to John, uh, Galatians five twenty four to twenty five. Let's keep going. If we are Christians, we do walk in the spirit. Uh, Paul said in Galatians or in Acts, excuse me, in Romans chapter eight, he said, uh, you know, as many as are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. So not just as so so that's led by the spirit that's not that's not walking in the spirit that's led by the spirit right it's interesting he says that if we are christians we do walk in the spirit uh paul said in galatians or in x excuse me in romans chapter 8 he said uh you know as many as are led by the spirit of god are the children of god so not just as many as have uh, have been born again but also who are led by the spirit of god now paul indicates if you're led by the spirit of god you you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh he said that in galatians 5 17. so there's uh, Paul's teaching seems to be that uh, you know you. Have wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. He said, "Okay, okay, wait, wait." So Galatians five seventeen. He just said, "For the for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would." So that's not what that's not what five seventeen says. Now in five eighteen. It says, if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. That is, if you are led by the Spirit, you're saved. You're not under the law. But it doesn't say you're going to walk in the Spirit or anything like that, okay? So Greg has badly misinterpreted these passages where it says led by the Spirit. He has badly misinterpreted these, okay? Really badly. And I don't know if Wilkin is... is I don't know if Wilkin caught it or not, but that, that was just hor horrifically bad. And also he misquoted Galatians 5.17. He completely misquoted it. And he also, what he was really talking about was 5.18. But even 5.18, he didn't misquote, he misquoted that too. So even if he got the number wrong, which we, we could say that's probably what happened there, but he still, even still, he just misquoted the verse anyway. Let's hear it again. Who are led by the Spirit of God. Now, Paul indicates if you're led by the Spirit of God, you, you don't. Fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said that in Galatians 5 17. So, so yeah, you see, he said that if you're led by the Spirit. Oh, okay, okay. In 5 16, he says, if you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk, not but not if you're led, if you walk, right? Then, I mean, that's 5 60, so I'll put that as well. Then in 5 17, it's like, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. And then in 518, then it's like, but if you led by the but if you be led by the, of the spirit, you're not under the law. It doesn't say if you be led of the spirit, you will do anything or anything like that. It's that you are not under the law, meaning if you're led of the spirit, you're saved. Okay. So I hope that cleared up anything that he was saying that's wrong there. I hope, or maybe you guys don't care, but I don't know. That was just terrible. There's uh, Paul's teaching seems to be that uh, you know you have to be trusting Christ, not in the law. If you, if you begin to trust in the law instead of Christ, you fall into right, again, led by the Spirit of God, or the children of God. So not just as many as have uh, have been born again, but also who are led by the Spirit of God. No, because being led by the Spirit of God means you're born again. That's what led by the Spirit means. That's what you can see in Romans 8 and in, and in Galatians 5. Led by the Spirit means you're saved. It doesn't have anything to do with how you behave or anything like that, okay? Now, Paul indicates if you're led by the Spirit of God, you, you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said that in Galatians 5, 17. So there's, uh, Paul's teaching seems to be that uh, you, know, you have to be trusting Christ, not in the law. If you, if you begin to trust in the law instead of Christ, you've fallen from grace. You've been estranged from Christ. You've joined another religion other than Christianity, and there's no grace in that for you. And also that if you are a child of God, you are being, you are walking in the spirit. You are not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. So, you know, if, if therefore someone thinks they're a Christian and they are fulfilling the lust of the flesh and, and Bob thinks this is possible for a real Christian to do, then, then Paul must, I think Paul must have been schizophrenic because he said that won't happen if you're walking in the spirit. 
and only those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So, uh, you know, I, I don't again, I don't see this as conducive with the view that. So that, that, that shows that Greg has just completely dropped the ball on that whole thing in Galatians 5, led by the Spirit and walk in the flesh. He doesn't get it. He completely messed it up, and that was embarrassingly bad. And so Wilkin, I don't think Wilkin caught it because it was quick. Like, I didn't catch it the first time either. It's like something I didn't – well, I don't think I even was really listening to this part. But anyway, that's really bad, but that's hard to catch. So maybe Wilkin missed it, but that was really, really bad. Okay, 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 okay. I'm studying the Bible in Toronto. 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 Studying the Bible with Mike Sam Pat. These other YouTubers are just so trash. Hit the thumbs up if you want to support. Go follow Mike as he follows the Lord. I'm studying the Bible in Toronto. 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 You better watch out, Mike's calling out the shields. If you're not free grace, you need to sit down and chill. We're not hyper grace, you know we keep it real. Eternally secure, you know that we're sealed. We don't back low, we're not workspace heretics. Mike's not in it for the money, trying to get a lick. They out here selling their souls for a couple clicks. They come in Freemason so they can't just get rich. I'm studying the Bible in Toronto. 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 Shout out to Mike Sam Pat. Check out his channel, Toronto Bible Study. Subscribe and like.